Hello everyone. So in this tutorial, we're going to be making a uh, archway, and we're going to be making it out of uh, a little modular assets uh, selection. Um, nothing complicated. All you need to do is create two planes, put a tileable texture on one of them, and a trim sheet on the other. If you haven't got those textures to hand, then best bet is probably just to follow along directly with this tutorial and maybe just take a screenshot of. Uh, these two uh, images right here, crop them down as best as you can and save them out as separate PNGs, one being the tileable texture and one being the trim sheet. Okay. Now you can follow along with any 3D program really. You just need to make sure that that 3D program has something called preserve UVs. So 3ds Max has a feature called preserve UV, so does Maya. And what it allows you to do, if you select an edge of your model like this, and you drag it out, usually it will stretch the texture. But if you turn on preserve UVs, it won't. It will repeat the texture over and over and over in multiple directions like that. Okay. So we really want that. That's really handy. We're obviously going to use the uh, wall texture here to uh, complete the main bulk of the wall asset. And then we're going to use the trim sheet to create a little wedging that we're going to distribute around the uh, corners and edgings and maybe the skirting board or something like that uh, of the wall here. Okay. Right, uh, let's go ahead and get started. So I'm just going to go to new all and make sure that I'm working on a blank scene just like you guys. I'm going to create a plane and I'm going to make sure it's uh, one by one. So I'm going to go 100 centimeters by 100 centimeters. Just going to make sure it's got only one length and width segment. I'm just going to make sure it's at zero, zero, zero on the X, Y, and Z. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and press M to enter my material editor. As you can see, I've already got materials in here. I'm just going to delete both of them and uh, work from a blank slate, just like you guys. I'm going to drag and drop in a PBR metallic roughness uh, material here. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to look up my uh, soluble texture here. You can just drag and drop it in. So there we are. I'm going to click on the material and assign it to the selection. So there you go. I've now put it on that plane. Um, I'm going to make sure the roughness is up on it. I'm going to copy that plane. And I'm now going to do the same thing with the, uh, the trim sheet. Okay. So once again, I'm going to go to bitmap lookup. And I'm going to select the trim sheet and just apply that. Okay. And make sure the roughness is up. Okay, lovely. So these are the templates. I'm just going to move them off to one side and I'm going to copy them because you never work on the templates. And I'm going to hide one of those. So I've always got it there as a backup. I'm going to bring my grid back. And now I'm going to center the wall texture, the wall texture plane rather. Got my angle snaps on here. I'm going to rotate it up 90 degrees like this. Okay. Just get it roughly into position. And I'm going to right click and convert to editable poly. This will allow us to move those edges about. I'm going to click on the edge selection. And I'm going to make sure under edit geometry I've got my preserve UVs on. And I'm just going to drag this out as far as I want it to go. Uh, until I just uh, get the edge of the cement there. Don't really want half a brick <laughs> at the top. That'd be a bit strange. I'm just going to give it a bit of width as well. Okay. And uh, what I'm going to do on these uh, edges here, I'm just going to put in uh, a couple of edge loops like that, sort of uh, little protective ones. That way I can do anything I want in here. And if it all goes wrong, what I've done in here, then I can always just delete it. And if I want to get back anything, then guess what? With preserve UVs, it will come back. It's just magic, isn't it? Okay. So I've pressed F4 to uh, turn on my wireframe there. That's how I can see these edges. Okay. Uh, I'm going to leave that as is for now. I'm just going to right click and I'm going to go to free selection. Okay. Now I'm going to start cutting up this uh, trim sheet so we can uh, 
we can use it. So I'm also going to convert this to an editable poly. And I'm going to go on edge mode. And you've got this little ribbon up here that you probably want to um, open up if you haven't already. That's how I'm accessing the Swift loop. And I'm just going to put an edge along that mortar line there. I'm going to put another one along the highlight, another one along that highlight, and then these two highlights here as well. Okay, so I've just drawn five edges there. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, like so. I'm going to select the polygons to the right of these bricks here, and I'm going to delete them because I don't need them. We're now going to shape. Uh, this into a bit of a 3D model. So I'm just holding down control, left clicking on these edges. I'm going to drag these down. I'm going to go on vertex mode and I'm going to select these vertices. I'm going to press R so I can go to my scale and uniform tool here. And I'm just going to scale them inward like that a bit. As you can see, it's a bit of a weird shape at the moment. So I'm going to align it a bit better. I'm going to go back on my select and move. Hold on, control, left click on these edge parts here. And under edit geometry, you've got this wonderful um, alignment uh, button there. You can align it on any axis. So I'm just doing that to align these on the X axis for me. Okay, so there they are. They're nicely aligned now. So you can see the texture is just a bit stretched out there. So all I'm going to do on the scale tool, I'm just going to click on the object and scale it in a bit so it's a bit less stretched out. Okay. Um, I'm now going to move the pivot point because I want the pivot point to be nearer the uh, bottom here. Let's be at the bottom of the object, not off in the middle of nowhere. That's no use to anyone. And to do this accurately, I'm going to use the snaps toggle. So I'm just going to right click on the snaps toggle there. I'm going to make sure vertex and edge segment are selected. Okay. And I'm just going to drag it to the corner here. That's fine. Okay. Brilliant. Um, I'm going to turn off snaps and I'm going to rotate this upright by 90. And I'm also going to rotate it 90 horizontally as well, like that. Okay. And I'm just going to bring it over here into uh, position. So this is going to be the um, uh, one of the sides pieces of the archway that I'm going to make. So I'm just going to place that there. Um, I'm going to copy it. Okay. And what I want to do now, I want to create the curve part of the arch that goes over like this, all right? And we're going to use a uh, we're going to use a bend modifier to do that actually. So I'm just going to go on edge selection again, go on swift loop, and I'm going to insert a loop for every. Um, a bit of cement between each brick here. Okay, just like that. Lovely stuff. Um, I'm going to go back to the uh, snaps toggle and I'm going to make sure I've aligned this to the one underneath. There we go. I'm now going to go onto the modifier panel. And I'm just going to type in bend. There we go, bend. And I'm going to give it a 90 degree angle and a 90 degree direction. And as you can see, I'm getting some funny results there. <laughs> but if I just move that over to the y axis, that should be fine. Okay, so I've got a nice uh, curve there. Now, if that hasn't worked for you, one little tip just hit the drop down on Gizmo and uh, try rotating the Gizmo. Okay, that will give you different uh, results. Okay, so that might be something more that you're after. Okay, but if you followed along exactly as I've done it, then it should be fine. Okay, so I'm just going to right click on that, collapse to, and yes. Okay, I'm going to go to edit geometry and I'm going to attach that to the piece underneath. Okay, and uh, what I want to do, you'll notice that um, I haven't quite got these aligned perfectly. So I'm going to do a very quick weld here. So I'm going to select all of these and I'm going to go to weld. And I'm just going to bump up the threshold until that goes from 78 to 72. Okay, 
because once it's welded, I should be losing six uh, vertices. So that's fine. You can just check that by moving them to make sure it's all kosher. Okay. Lovely stuff. Right. Um, I am now going to move the pivot point yet again. Effect pivot point only. Turn on the snaps. And I'm going to move that to the uh, top corner here. Okay, so I just want that to snap to that edge just there. Perfect. Okay. And we're going to use a symmetry modifier to copy the uh, plane across. So I'm just going to turn off slice along mirror there. And I'm going to do weld seam. That's fine. Okay. Just turn off my snaps here and make sure that's all as I want it to be. Yep. Okay. So, once you're happy with that, just uh, right click, collapse to, and yes. And as you can see, that's now collapsed down to an editable poly uh, once again. Okay. Uh, so, what I will now do is I will unfreeze the uh, wall behind and i will freeze the archway because the next step is to uh cut out uh, a hole where this archway is going to be so to do that i'm going to stick in a edge for each vertical part one in the middle like this as well and I'm going to do another one horizontally, just where the curve starts. I'm going to right-click to deselect that. Um, and I'm going to delete these polygons here. And I'm also, once I go to Vertex, I'm going to control backspace these, just to delete them. So I'll just do that. And I'm going to connect these ones like so. Okay. I'm just going to bring these back here. Right click connect. Control backspace. Right click connect. Connect these. Control backspace these. Okay, now with this one, I'm just going to make sure I've got my preserve UVs on and I'm going to drag that up. Okay. And now I'm going to cut in just an extra edge there. And the reason I'm doing this is so I can move this up just to disguise the archway a bit. There you go. So I haven't got any of that bleeding through now. As you can see, that hasn't hurt the texture behind it at all. That's all kosher. So if I press F4 now, it's fine. Okay. And if I unfreeze it, that is also fine. Okay. Now, um, of course, this is only one side of the wall. So if you want a bit more uh, thickness to your wall, uh, you simply just want to copy it like this. Okay. And uh, maybe select the um, element and go over to edit polygon and under edit polygon just flip it like that okay now you've got two sides to your wall like that that's pretty much it uh, you repeat the same process with the top to get your uh, edging as you want it and uh, yeah there you are uh, thanks for watching uh, subscribe and i shall catch you next time